Hi, my name is Viviana Valentine. I'm from Nandi and today FM rocks. My name is Ateva. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Fish. I'm from Tava. I like listening to Big Breakfast. Today FM rocks. I'm Juliana. I'm from Maltaka and I like I like listening to Today FM. Hi, my name is Shelly. I live in Arere. Today FM rocks my drug and lollipop. Bula, my name is So. I'm from Navua. I like listening to Today's FM. Bula, my name is Asilika from Rocky Rocky and Today FM rocks with my flip flops. Today's hit music on Today FM. I'm Jackie Spate. This is FBC News. Tonight, Sports Minister extends best wishes to Fiji 7's gladiators ahead of Rio Games. Th 33,000 tons of sugar bound for the Netherlands. And children's cancer charity WOWS hopes to build a new resource centre in Lautoka. Just one day until the Fiji 7's first pool match, Minister for Sports Laisinia Tuitumbo expressed his well wishes to our 7's gladiators. This is the first time rugby is being played in the Olympics. Meli Tavanga reports. As the nation looks forward to the game, Tuitumbo says that the whole country is behind the team and are eagerly waiting to watch them in action. Uh, as uh, we have done it in the back-to-back -back HSBC series, um, I will just make uh, have made a commitment to to meet them at, 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 at every time they come. We know lose, but now I think uh, this is the the major one of the major events of uh, for Fiji taking part in the Olympics. He is confident that Fiji will bring back the gold. As for now, uh, our Fiji Seven teams are rated number one because of the HSBC result. So we are all behind them and uh, we'd like to convey our, uh, our congratulations to them and on their games, uh, their first game, and also to the families of uh, the players. And, uh, the sacrifice the family made, uh, we think of them too. FBC Sports also spoke with people on the street about what they think of our Sevens Gladiators. Our Fiji Sevens team is uh, really well prepared under the guidance of our coach, Ben Ryan, and they've been doing a lot of hard work, so no doubt they will come on top as winners. I believe that Ben Ryan has picked the best for Fiji, and I believe they will do their best. The Fiji men's seven side takes on Brazil in their first three Olympics pool match at 4.30 a.m. this Wednesday. Meli Tawanga, FBC Sports. The overseas vessel Interlink Equality is currently berthed in Lombasa, loading sugar bound for the Netherlands. Eleanor Thurangaiview reports the ship arrived on Friday afternoon to take our first sugar shipment for this season. Fiji's first shipment of sugar for export is being loaded at the Malau port in Lombasa over a month after the sugarcane crushing season began. Loading started on Friday afternoon. It's anticipated... Uh that the loading will complete by Tuesday afternoon when uh, the vessel will then set sail for Lotok. 33,000 tons of sugar is to be loaded onto the ship bound for the Netherlands. 27,000 tons is currently being loaded here at Malau from the bulk up through the conveyor belt and right into the ship. Another 6,000 tons will be loaded in Lotoka. From Lotoka and it'll uh, ship its cargo to the Netherlands. Ilaitiera Tumainadeva says the process of loading takes time and so far everything is on schedule. Our uh, priority now is just to ensure that uh, everything uh, uh, progresses well uh, so that there's not a lot of uh, interruption during the course of uh, this first uh, sugar loading. The Lombasa mill produced just under 80,000 tons of sugar last year and nearly all of the sugar was shipped out for export. FSC hopes to have four sugar shipments for export this year. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News.
Late detection of cancer in children remains an obstacle in providing adequate treatment and health care. The Walk on Walk Strong Kids Foundation has spent years providing support to young cancer patients and says awareness is still lacking in Fiji. Fiji records an average of 30 new cases of cancer in children every year. If you were to ask uh, many of the medical folks, they'd be saying, awareness, awareness, awareness. You've got to get the kids uh, you've got to find it earlier in terms of identifying the cancer, that kids have cancer and get that earlier, there's more chance of being able to fix it. Wao's co-founder Taolo Kami appeared on the For the Record program last night, along with businessman Div Damodar. This year, the Wao's campaign is all about awareness. When you start speaking to business houses and all, they go, how big is the problem? And then when you share the stats and all, and what's What's, uh, what's been happening. You get quite a shock with that. In some cases, late detection of cancer in children can be blamed on socioeconomic issues such as a lack of money, distance from hospitals and a lack of knowledge. The Walk On Walk Strong campaign hopes to open a resource centre in Lotoka in the near future in order to extend services to children in rural areas living with cancer. Edwin Nunn, FBC News. Plans are in place to further enhance the growth of the information and communications industry in Fiji. Trade Minister Fias Koya has revealed this while visiting the award-winning Mind Pearl Call Center in Asinu earlier today. Ali Kimbia has more. This is an industry believed to have a bright future in Fiji. The government has assured overseas investors Fiji has a robust infrastructure to cater for ICT. And this is one of the areas that, uh, that is, is really crucial to us, especially because we've got quite a substantial young, substantially young workforce. Koya says Fiji has the quality to thrive in the call center business. But it's the quality that's offered in Fiji is unsurpassed. It's, it's, it's actually uh, probably one of the best in the world. For Mine Pearl, maintaining the growth of the industry is vital for more development. At this point in time, with Fiji has got a very, very small footprint in the sector and getting the name out there would definitely benefit Fiji as a whole. It would definitely also be beneficial for us as a business. Meanwhile, the government has announced it will extend tax-free zone areas from Nausori Airport to the Matawalu River in Ba to encourage businesses like this to start operation in these areas. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. A number of Fijians failed to complete their work contracts under the Seasonal Workers Program. Employment Minister Semi Kuroi Lavesau says because of these failures, the selection criteria has been reviewed and changed to ensure they have the right applicants come 2017. Maggie Boyle reports. With the pilot for the Seasonal Work Programs concluding, it hasn't been all smooth sailing. Well, that consisted of 20. I farewell them on, uh, on November last year. When I visited, there was only six left, so we were talking about that ratio. So, yeah, yeah it's a learning process for us. Employment Minister Semikar Lavisau says part of the new process is ensuring recruitment will be restricted to the rural areas. People that we recruited from the urban areas did not have any idea or not suitable to work in the rural setting uh, due to the weather conditions and also they're not used to physical hard work. Farlavasau says one of the key features of the program will be the exchange of skills. Different uh, work ethics, different farming techniques. The minister adds their processes have been fine-tuned to ensure that they have at least 1,500 Fijians ready and waiting to take up seasonal jobs in New Zealand and Australia in the coming months. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, joint operation to focus on student safety during school holidays. And final preparations underway for the much-anticipated Hibiscus Festival. Stay with us. Radio Fiji One, the Moibiti Nabongan Zanyan, Nazangolite, Iraqi Rak. Radio Fiji One, and the Moibiti Nabongan Zanyan.
Welcome back. This is FBC News. With the second term school break just around the corner, the police have launched an operation with the LTA on student safety during the fun-filled holiday. This was highlighted by Fiji Police Director Traffic Mahesh Mishra. He says parents should be vigilant of their children's whereabouts. Kelly Vadalo reports. With 35 road fatalities this year, of which four were children, the police will closely monitor the movements of school children come the term break. Our focus is uh, just uh, how best we can uh, see our road is safe and we are, going to, we are anticipating a lot of movement of people and vehicles on the road. We urge our parents and guardians to please ensure to guide and to supervise their children anywhere they go. The Minister for Education Mahendra Reddy says parents play a very important role in looking after the young ones during the break. I want to urge all parents to look after the children. The purpose of the break is to give the students an opportunity to relax and participate in those activities which probably was not possible when they were studying during the term. This year's second school term holiday will only be for a week due to the devastation of Cyclone Winston earlier in the year. The school holiday is expected to start from the 13th of August till the 21st. Kelly Vardala, FPC News. For almost a month now, the RFNS Kiro has been stuck on the Kaoyawa Reef near Makuluva Island. Navy Commander Commodore John Fox has confirmed to FBC News that the 15,000 litres of diesel oil on the patrol boat was removed last week. Commodore Fox says the salvaging of the vessel remains a challenge with access to the Kiro only possible at low tide and usually during the night. The commander adds that they are assessing the salvage of the RFNS Kiro and a report on the operation will be released later this week. All food stores for the 2016 Hibiscus Festival have been sold out. Hibiscus Events Group Executive Chair Hirdesh Prasad has confirmed all 60 stores have been booked as the new venue has attracted new businesses. The Hibiscus Events Group is hopeful the new venue for the festival will be appreciated by many as the ground conditions are good compared to the past two years. With an early onset on rain, the group says this won't cause any hiccups. Two days of rain has just hindered a little bit, but we started early. Uh, we were mobilized over here on 1st of August and, uh, and we started uh, erecting tents from then. So um, it's not like being in Albert Park where it is muddy and over here it's all tassel and, and crushed metal. So, so people are able to bring in their rice, bring in their um, tents. Prasad has also assured members of the public that there will be no issue of parking. We have uh, the road that goes through Nando's um, and uh, we have, I have talked with the um, uh, group Zubair and um, they have agreed to let us park all the way and I'm also having CCTV cameras all the way to the back so people's cars don't get broken in and we'll be also be able to park uh, where the for show is so there is a lot of space available for us. So. Works are currently underway here at the Vodafone Arena in preparation for the Hibiscus Festival which will open this Saturday. A total of 55 contestants from the five categories will be vying for the crown. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. More than 80,000 people have viewed Fiji Broadcasting Corporation's cheer anthem, Go Fiji Go, which was launched last week. The song produced by FBC staff is not only a hit on social media, but has become popular in nightclubs and other public places. Chief Executive Ria Said Kayum says the cheer is also available as a hello tune from Vodafone Fiji. All the money raised, uh, or the revenue earned from the hello tunes, uh, will be given to the, uh, to the boys when they come back. Every, every single cent of it, so you know, no one's taking any share on that. So we're hoping that all Fijians in the country uh, download and, and, and have this as their Hello Tunes so that uh, we are able to raise a lot of revenue, a lot of money, uh, as much as we can for uh, the boys when they come back. The song was made specifically for the Sevens team taking part in the Rio Olympic Games. 
Local doctors and nurses are expected to undergo training in cardiac surgery with the hope that Fiji can establish its own pediatric cardiac surgical unit. The proposal has been made by doctors from the Sanjivani Hospital in India who are in Fiji performing surgery on children with heart disease. Dr. Krupali Tapu, the local coordinator for Sai Prema Foundation, says the team is willing to train doctors and nurses for free so that these advanced surgeries can be performed here. Ultimately, um, you know, Fiji doesn't have a team and so we rely on visiting teams. Um, <clears throat> and some cases are really urgent, you know, we can't operate here and they have to be flown out to New Zealand or Australia and that was, that's what happens. So the aim is that the simpler ones in a couple of years, hopefully they'll be able to do some surgeries here. A shadow team from Fiji is also part of the surgery currently being conducted at the CWM hospital. With day two of the Olympic Games having come to an end, Jamie joins us now with an update from Rio. Nakazaki, that's right. Coming up after the break, USA banks on Fiji and dine for seven's gold. This and more coming up. Hey, Jigen, Nambilo, Talibuse, Radio Fiji 2, Chabu Shakanto, Mira Sat Sat Retai. I'm Angeri Tawa Kelaleshe. हमारे दिल में और दिमाग में खाली रेडियो फिजी टू है और सभी भाइयों से आग्रह करते हैं कि रेडियो फिजी टू सुनना चाहिए मेरा नाम अभिनेश है मैं नींदी का रहने वाला हूँ मैं सभी समय रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता हूँ क्योंकि उसमें आईना प्रोग्राम रहता है हाय मैं उमेश नसासा नाबुआ से मैं जब भी सुना रेडियो फिजी टू सुना रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Fiji football striker Roy Krishna has become the first Fijian to score a goal at an Olympic Games. After netting in the 5-1 loss to Mexico this morning, Fiji led 1-0 at the break, but five unanswered goals in the second spell by Mexico saw the national side lose its second game in Rio. Fiji is now out of contention for a middle playoff and plays Germany in its last match on Thursday at 7 a.m. Meanwhile, in boxing, Winston Hill lost his bout in the men's 69 kilograms welterweight category. He was beaten on points by Armenia's Vladimir Magarin. The USA 7 side will be depending hugely on the talent of Fijian Andrew Ndurutalo at the Olympic Games in Brazil. The London 7's winners are pooled alongside Fiji, Argentina and host Brazil. Rohit Deo caught up with coach Mike Friday in Rio and filed this report. Yeah, Andrew's been working very hard. We've got to make Andrew work very hard. Um, he's had a fantastic season with the Sunwolves. Um, and he's come back into camp and he's worked very hard on his conditioning. He's got great ball skills. Commitments with the Sunwolves in Super Rugby. But Friday says having the Fiji and back is a bonus for his side. It's nice to have Andrew back um, and Andrew part of our squad. And, uh, and hopefully um, he'll rise to the challenge of, of what will be a very tough group. Friday adds that playing Fiji in the pool stages is always a mammoth task, but they are up for it. We've had some great games against Fiji this last year in the World Series, uh, you know, always kind of just by one score. So let, let's hope it's as uh, entertaining as ever. And let's hope this time, like in London, it's, it's USA, USA's day. But, you know, who knows? Fiji are, are a fantastic team. And as I said, they're the, they're the favourites and they deserve to be favourite. The men's competition begins on Wednesday and Fiji plays its opening match against Brazil at 4.30 a.m. You can watch the competition live on FBC TV. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Fijiana Sevens team will play USA in the fifth place semi-final tomorrow after being bundled out of middle contention at the Olympics. The Chris Cracknell coach side was beaten 26-7 by Great Britain in the quarterfinal this morning. The Fiji and USA game is at 5.30 tomorrow morning and you can catch it live on FBC TV. Team Fiji shooter Glenn Cable finished 20th out of 33 in the men's trap qualification event this morning. USA swimming superstar Michael Phelps added a 19th gold medal to his ever-growing Olympic record haul this afternoon. Phelps surged ahead in the second leg of the 4x100 meter freestyle relay to give the US team a lead it held till the end. It was Phelps' first race of this Rio 2016 Olympics and the 31-year-old looked like the version of himself who had dominated previous games. You know, USA has taken the lead on the medal tally at the completion of day two of the Olympics. USA's three gold, five silver and four bronze medals, followed by China with three gold, two silver and three bronze medals. Australia, Italy and Korea complete the top five. 
That's it from sports this evening. It's back to Jackie now with business. <laughs> The devastation of tropical cyclone Winston has prompted the resurrection of the Tourism Action Group to assist the industry in bouncing back. Tourism and Hotel Association President Dixon Sito says they have registered success and changes can be expected. Rachel Nath has more. The tourism industry stakeholders have been working closely to ensure growth remains the focus in the most trying times. We are working much closer than we have done before. Uh, and. Uh, I can see that with the, with the current team of people, uh, there, is, there is a desire to work closer to achieve a common goal. Mm. And I think the, one of the phrases coined in our uh, various meetings is Team Fiji. And that, that tells a story. CETO says Tourism Fiji is in the process of finalizing the Fijian tourism development plans, which will be released in the next few months. We've given all our inputs, we've had consultations. It includes everything from, you know, hotel development and legislation and employment and air services. It has the whole gambit. Uh, so it'll, it'll tackle, I think, uh, and it'll tackle all the considerations that is needed to have a very vibrant tourism industry. Okay. And uh, it's had the input from all the stakeholders. The tag members consist of Fiji Airways, Tourism Fiji, the Fiji Hotel and Tourism Association and other major stakeholders. Rachel Nath, FBC News. A 27-year-old man has won $100,000 in the Vodafone Pick 6 lottery. The winner sent 72 entries worth more than $100 with six different number combinations. Vodafone Fiji's Chief Marketing Officer Rajnish Prasad says the winner, who is a sole breadwinner, has previously won $30,000. I was really thrilled to know that he has won the 100000 and he said that uh, he'll be using the money, uh, money wisely to ensure he invests in his uh, business as well as he takes, he wanted to take, uh, take a holiday as well. So I think uh, uh, this money would definitely help him to, to fulfill some of the dreams that he had for his, for his life. It was a wet start to a Monday morning as unsettled conditions were the order of the day in most parts of the nation. Temperatures were constant in all centres at 23 while bar moved a degree higher at 24. For tomorrow, widespread rain is predicted for the whole nation. Low-lying areas are, have possible flooding hazards. Looking further ahead to Wednesday, expect rains with moderate winds to continue around Fiji. At sea south to southeast winds to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping the main stories for tonight, a sports minister extends best wishes to Fiji Sevens gladiators ahead of Rio Games. 33,000 tons of sugar bound for the Netherlands and children's cancer charity WOWS hopes to build new resource centre in Lautoka. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. Results from last week's poll question we had asked, should Ben Ryan be given Fijian citizenship? 84% answered yes. This week's question and we are asking, are you happy with Fiji's overall Olympic performance so far? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Good night. from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sadakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Grove Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic music. I'm Saini from Kashmir Wotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.